Hey everyone, this is James from James's Hobby Zone. All right, so today I'm doing my finished review on the ME262 B1A U1 Night Fighter. Now, a little history about the ME262 is the ME, the Messerschmitt ME262, nicknamed the Swallow, is a <clears throat> or was the world's first operational jet powder power fighter aircraft uh it was designed in the oh we all i just lost that design work started before world war ii began but problems with engines and top level interference kept the aircraft from operational status with the luftwaffe until mid 1940 so <clears throat> they designed this aircraft to be uh like the f-18 and the uh, and the Fokker Wolf 190, where it had multiple roles: uh, night fighter, bomber, regular fighter, you know, multiple versions. So it was a fighter bomber. Now the night fighter, as I look through my information that I have here. <sighs> The actually, you know what? I'm uh, gonna go back. The uh, the aircraft came with two uh, Yonkers Jumbo 004 turbojet engines, where they it actually came up with reliability problems. So there was engine problems with that already once it got designed. So. Uh, Design and development. So the origins were several several years before World War II was designed. Uh, it was uh, in 1936 when they first came out with the HE-178. Within weeks of the invasion of Poland to start the war, they adapted the jet engines for advanced fighter aircraft. As a result, the ME-262 was already under development as Projet 1065 before the start of World War II. Now, plans were first drawn up in April of 1939, and the design and the original design was very different from the aircraft that eventually entered service with wing root mounted engines rather than uh, popped ones, pod ones. When submitted in June of 1939, the, the process of the original design was delayed greatly by technical issues involving the new jet engines because jet engines were slow to arrive. Messerschmitt moved the engines from the wing root to underwing pods allowing them to be changed more readily if needed. This would turn out to be very important, both available and maintenance. Since the BMW 003 jet engines provided, provided proved heavier than anticipated and the wings was sl swept slightly by 18.5 degrees to accommodate the change in the center of gravity. Funding for the jet engine programs was also <clears throat> lacking as many high-ranking officials through the war could easily be won with conventional uh, aircraft. Among these were Hermann Goering, head of the Luftwaffe, who cut the engine development program to just 35 engineers in February of 1940 before the first wooden mock-up was completed. Willy Messerschmitt, who desired to maintain mass production of the piston power 1935 original BF-109s and the project ME-209, Major Adolf Galan, who had initially supported ME Messerschmitt throughout the early developments of the year, flying the ME-262 himself on April 22nd of 1943. 
That would be a little bit, that's a little bit of history. There's a lot more history on Wikipedia about the ME262, but let's get out of the, doing a little bit of history of the ME262. Uh, all right, so this, I'm gonna remove the box. That is my, sorry about the lighting in here. It's a little bit of a shadow, but this is the completed ME262 that I have. It's the Night Rider version. Now the aircraft that the markings, as soon as I can find them, the markings of the aircraft are in a in the pilot Lieutenant Herbert Alter in 1945. I believe he was the one who flew this this Night Fighter. Now this Hobby Boss kit, I have to say went together beautifully. There is no filler on this model at all. Uh, I definitely gotta say Hobby Boss did a great job. I do know that I, well, I heard that Hobby Boss was also owned by Trumpeter. And uh, I've been looking at a lot of their instructions. Their instructions for the um, for the decals and the painting, everything's in color. That is what was phenomenal about the instructions and how well this model went together. It just made me think that they engineered this model very well. And it is an older model. It's not, uh, it's a, it's a 2007 model. It's not one of the newer kits, but like I said, they did a really great job with, uh, engineering this one. I really like how it came out. The only thing I really had to just add was the antenna that you can see. Uh, yeah, I'll, just, I'll use my big finger. Don't mind my little finger. But the antenna you can see I added. It's a piece of string, uh, sewing string that I put there. Um, the engines, there's a little bit. Uh, I'll show you the uh, little bit of um, dirt and stuff I added. Uh, I did do a chipping effect, as you can see on the on some of the engines. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, there you go. See a little bit of chipping effect around the engines, around the front of the aircraft. There's the radars, radar antennas that helped it at night to find its targets. All the decals were installed. Uh, decals were, um, I believe, Conograph, I think that's how you say it. Made in Italy, so I know that the decals were very, very well. I liked them a lot. There's the infamous swastika that a lot of people get offended about and accuse you of being a Nazi when you're building these planes. But I only build them for fun. I don't build them for anything else. Uh, so, and then here's the under undercarriage. I can't really see too too much of what I did, but you can slight oops sorry about that. You can slightly see where the engines are a little discolored. Oh maybe not. I can't really see them too well. But I I think when I did the whole flat the flat color it knocked out all the uh all my weathering that I did, so I'll just do the chipping. Chipping's the only thing that actually showed, none of the pigments showed. Um, the model overall starting was uh, put together with Tamiya, uh, extra thin glue. Uh, it was then, <coughs> uh, the cockpit was painted in the uh, Vallejo black gray. And uh, I wonder if you can actually see inside. You might not be able to see inside too, too well, but yeah, you can see a little bit inside where uh, decals were put up to simulate all the navigation and stuff. Uh, and then what else I did is I had a mix to make the light. It, it's like a it, on the box. It looks like it's a uh, like it's almost like a gray, a gray white but it's actually a very light, light blue. So what I had to do is I had to mix light blue, 
with some gray and with some white to be able to come up with the color that it was needed. And then that was mixing the three Villagio colors together. I really, I really like how the Villagio colors come together and everything. And then the, uh, the camo scheme is more of black, gray, sprayed around and gray pretty much and yeah no filler added that was the neat greatest thing about this model is no filler was added that was great I, this is the first model i have built where i didn't have to put filler now i know that i did a trumpeter kit before of the FW200, and I know that I ended up accidentally, the way I manufact, the way I put it all together, I had to use filler for it. But looking at how everyone else did that one model, you can actually tell that you were, that, that kit was also manufactured very well too. So, but this one, it, it just blows my mind on how it went together so nicely. Nothing at all. I'll be taking pictures of it hopefully tomorrow or I might just take pictures of it now and then I'll be and then I'll post them on the Instagram at uh, www.instagram.com slash James underscore hobby underscore zone that you can follow me and you can see all the pictures that I post some and plus also some uh, progress reports on other models that I'm building during this time that I have been basically, I lost 16 hours of work, so I've just been building models, running favor for a friend of mine, and then I go see, I go see her, and I go see the uh, the kids that uh, she has. Uh, Tuesdays, I leave Monday night, and I leave, I go up to the Dallas area, and that's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and I come back Friday. So, but yep, that's it. That's the 262. Uh, 262 B1A slash U1 Night Fighter of the Swallow. Or Swallow. Alright, everyone. Uh, I guess that would be it for this video. Surprisingly, I actually made it last almost 13 minutes. Usually, I keep it under 10, but... This model, I just had to give a little bit of brief history about the ME262 and how it, if, I'd say if they entered, if it entered the war in the 1940s when it was, it started to become designed, I would say definitely might have changed the tide of the war. And if it was used in a fighter version more than what uh, Hermann Goering had it set up as just a bomber. If they set it up as the actual fighter that they were, like Adolf Galan suggested, it definitely, definitely would have t uh, changed the tide of the war. But good thing they made that mistake, right, guys? Because I don't think we, I don't think we'd all be speaking English right now. We'd all be speaking German. All right, fellas, you have a good night. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. And because the next video is going to be the finished product of the Harrier Jump Jet. So from Ravel. All right, guys. Talk to you later. So, uh, and stay safe out there. Oh, too close. See you later, guys. Bye.